Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the smallest Ryzen powered desktop PC that I've ever had the chance to review on the channel. This is known as the Liva Q3 Plus, and recently on my channel we took a look at the Intel version, but this one is much more powerful given that we have 4 cores, 8 threads with a boost up to 3.6 GHz. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. Like I mentioned, this is by Liva. It's the Q3 Plus, and they actually offer a couple different variants, different RAM configurations, and even different CPU configurations. But the one I have here has 128 gigabytes of internal storage, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and the Ryzen 1605B. This is an embedded Ryzen APU with built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. So along with the Q3 Plus inside of the box, we're also going to get a vase mount. And this will just make it really easy to mount it to the back of your monitor or under your desk. We also have the hardware included, some universal wall plugs, and a 12 volt 35 watt power supply. Taking a look at this little thing, on the front here we have two USB 3.0 ports, a single USB 2.0 port, and our power button. Taking a look at each side here, there's not much going on, but we do have some ventilation because this is an actively cooled mini PC. It's not a totally silent PC, and we definitely need this cooler built in. And around back, we have a full-size HDMI port, Gigabit Ethernet, Mini Display Port, and our Power N. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was just kind of pull the bottom off of this thing. I'm not going to do a full disassembly, but I did want to get a quick look at this CPU and fan that they're using in this. Because this little mini PC actually has some heft to it, and it really comes down to this full copper heatsink that they chose to use. Plus, they've added a 60mm fan. This is actually the biggest fan I've seen in these mini PCs, so hopefully it can keep this Ryzen embedded APU nice and chilly. When it comes to the specs of this mini PC, for that CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen Embedded V1605B. Four cores, eight threads, base clock 2 GHz with a boost up to 3.6. Built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 1100 MHz, 8 GB of LPDDR4 at 2400 MHz, non-user replaceable, 128 GB of internal eMMC storage, and this is running Windows 10 Home out of the box, but these little embedded APUs actually have really good Linux support, so if you wanted to run that, you could always wipe it and install. Alright, so here we are. This has Windows 10 Home pre-installed on it. As you can see, we have that Ryzen embedded V1605B. 4 cores, 8 threads, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 MHz. It's soldered to the board, but it is running in dual channel, which will definitely help out with the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. I definitely want to test out some gaming on this little PC, but, uh, you know, picking something like this up for an everyday desktop would work out just fine. This does have AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 built in. Just head right over here to their main website. Leva, Liva, not exactly sure uh, how to pronounce it, but this is made by ECS. They make a lot of motherboards. Browsing the web, everything like that works out just fine. I'm going to head over to some WebGL samples real quick and just see what we can do with the aquarium. So uh, 500 fish, 60 FPS, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, it starts to dip a bit. But, uh, I mean, we're right on the edge there. 58 and 1,500 is where it kind of falls on its face. But, yeah, I mean, as many PCs go with this form factor here, a lot of them are Intel, and we can't even make it past 5,000 with those Celeron chips. So, I mean, web browsing on something like this is going to perform phenomenally, given its form factor. Next thing I wanted to test was a little bit of 4K video playback, and we're going to move over to my 4K monitor. And uh, here we are with a YouTube video demo, 4K, 60fps. I do have stats for nerds going up in the top left hand corner and I know it's a bit hard to see, but we are at true 4K, I don't have any scaling going or anything like that, and we only have 12 drop frames out of 3000, and by the end of this we only had 14 drop frames in this 4K, 60fps video. And going into this, I had a good feeling it was going to handle 4K video playback quite well, given that we have that 4 core, 8 thread CPU, and Vega 8 graphics. The next thing I wanted to take a look at are some benchmarks. First one I ran was Geekbench 5, single core, 827, multi, 2633. Now if this were a full size desktop, I wouldn't be impressed, but since we're given such a small form factor here, this is actually looking pretty good. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. First up we have Night Raid, 7681. Next on the list, Firestrike with a 2082. And finally, Time Spy, 798. So it's definitely not a high-end gaming PC, and it's not marketed as such, but I do think that we can get away with some pretty decent frame rates from some of our favorite games. 
First up, Overwatch 900p, low settings. I got an average of 72 FPS. And if we take a look at that GPU usage, it's going crazy because I forgot to change it inside of Afterburner, but there are a couple games that I remember to do it in. But overall, for what we're working with here, I'm actually pretty impressed with the performance of this game. Next up, Fortnite Performance Mode at 1080p. I would probably drop this down to around 900 because I do see some dips every once in a while, but overall it's really not that bad. Checking out some OG Skyrim performance, 900p, medium settings, we got a steady 60 here. Even with magic going, it was looking really good. I think we could jack some of these settings up to high. Here's GTA 5, 720p, normal settings. I got an average of 45 FPS. I was actually expecting a little lower out of it. Um, it's not a super powerful PC, but to see it running this game here at or over 30 FPS is still pretty impressive. You could lock this at 30, play it like this all day. Witcher 3 performance definitely wasn't great. 720p, low settings. I got an average of 29 FPS out of it, but we do have a lot of stutters, and it really comes down to that RAM speed, because we're using this as VRAM. And the final game I tested was Cyberpunk 2077. I had to take this really low. 720p, low settings, 50% resolution scale. We got an average of 24 FPS. And uh, it's definitely not that clean because we're at 50% resolution scale at 720p. But going into this, I knew it wasn't going to perform well with this game. It's just a harder one to run. Whenever I'm testing out these mini PCs, I always like to test out total power consumption drawn from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, we averaged 8 watts. Gaming, 32. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 38 watts. And keep in mind, we have a 35 or a 34 watt power supply on this unit. One thing I was concerned about with this mini PC were CPU temps because these embedded Ryzen APUs can actually get pretty hot. But I think they've done a pretty good job here. At idle, we average 41 degrees Celsius, while gaming, on average, 73, and in one of the games I did see it jump up to 80 just for a second and that fan kicked on, and the maximum that I could get this to hit was 91 degrees Celsius. That's the thermal limit they've set in the BIOS. But this was under extreme conditions, with all four cores, eight threads, and that Vega 8 totally maxed out. When it comes to fan noise, it's actually not that bad. I mean, even gaming at that 73 degrees Celsius uh, average there, you really can't hear it. But once it ramps up to around 80, 81 degrees, it does whine a bit. It's not super loud. It doesn't sound like a jet engine. And if you had this about three feet away from you, you'd probably never notice it. Overall, really impressed with this mini PC. It's definitely a big step up in performance when you compare it to the Celeron-powered mini PCs at this forum factor. This does come in a bit bigger than, let's say, the Lark Box or the GMK Nook Box, but I think sacrificing that form factor just by a little bit for this extra performance would be totally worth it. I will have a dedicated emulation video coming up soon, so definitely keep an eye out on the channel. And another thing I would actually like to do was up the TDP on this using something like Ryzen Controller, just to squeeze a little extra performance out of this thing. But as it sits right now, the included power supply is basically maxed out once we uh, you know, start maxing out the CPU on this thing. So I do need to find something like a 65 watt power supply that'll work with this unit. And as soon as I do, I will make another video because I do think that we could squeeze a little more out of it. So when it comes to this form factor, this is definitely the most powerful mini PC that I've ever tested. I mean, if you go a little bigger, we have some more powerful stuff out there. But I mean, this is a palm-sized PC that puts out this kind of performance. And in my opinion, it's pretty amazing.
If you'd like to learn more about the Q3 Plus, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.